the festivals that have taken root here in our city, the city that we love so much, have shaped the city's character. So in a sense, first we built the festival, and then the festival shapes us. It carries the reputation of this city around the world. It is a festival that's owned and rooted in the people of this city. It's international, truly international in its reach, in its aspiration, in its ambition, and in its scale. And I think, I've come to think of the Edinburgh International Book Festival as Edinburgh's conversation with the world. Well, welcome to the Bailey Gifford Children and Young Persons Programme for 2016. Uh, I've just been so inspired and fascinated by how bold and brave and ambitious the children's writing has been in, the, in this coming year and for this programme. Roughly 203 writers and illustrators from countries such as Brazil, uh, Iceland, France, obviously all across the UK, Iran, Alaska. It's just been amazing to do the reading, to do the programming, do take a look at it, do come along. I realise that what, really what we're doing is we're every year holding up a mirror to what you've done this year. Maybe like, like magnifying glass in the, in the sunlight that we could actually together set the world on fire with our ideas. That's the aim of the book festival and that I think is what sets us apart from every other literary festival anywhere in the world. <laughs> so this year's programme is about the power of writers to imagine a better world. It's a programme that's partly inspired by the international journeys I've been lucky to make this year. Last October I travelled to Jerusalem and Ramallah to launch a book called Shifting Sands that we produced together with a group of Middle Eastern writers. In that book the authors put forward an argument that I found profoundly moving. In the face of all the deep problems facing the Middle East, they were convinced that any hope for a solution to the crisis lies in the imaginations of writers and of artists and of playwrights and of creative people who live in the Middle East. In that vein, I and my colleagues began programming for this August with the idea of exploring whether the writer's imagination really can help us and be a key component in human progress. And we realized, of course, that there are plenty of questions, urgent questions right now, that demand imaginative answers. How can Scotland have a powerful voice on the international stage? How can we build a more productive relationship with Europe? And of course, how can we deal with the tragedy of the migration crisis? We think that those questions and others can be answered in this year's program, which is called Imagine Better. It's a theme and a plea rolled into one. This festival belongs to you, all of you. So I'd like to declare this year's programme launched by saying a big thanks to you, my colleagues, my friends, all of you in Scotland's literary community who's part of this year's programme. Thank you. It's yours. <laughs>